In this video, we're going to learn about if statements in C++. So if statements are something we can use to execute code or not execute code based on some condition. So for example, we could have if five is equal to five. Now five is always going to be equal to five. We'll try out some conditions that are not always going to be true next, but let's see what happens when the condition is true. We'll output here five does equal five followed by an end line. And then down here, we'll output if statement done, just so we can recognize when the if statement is done. We'll follow it with an end line here as well. So we can save, compile, and run this, and we'll get five does equal five, followed by if statement done. So this here is a condition, and we're checking to see if five is equal to five. Now this condition is always going to be true. Typically we have conditions that are not always going to be true. We have conditions that use some sort of variable where that variable could be different, maybe based on a calculation, maybe based on user input. So for example, we could have here int price is equal to, and let's say 100. Then here we'll have a check to see if the price is equal to 100. So if the price is equal to 100, then we'll output price does equal 100. We'll save this, compile, and run it. And we get price does equal 100. And again, we get if statement done. So that's more typically what we see for a condition. So we would say that this condition evaluated to true. The condition is going to be checked at runtime as the program is executing based on the value of price. So if price is, let's say 90, now this condition will evaluate to false because 90 does not equal 100. We can save, compile, and run the program now and we'll no longer get price does equal 100. Instead, we just get if statement done. So this block of code here never executes because this condition evaluates to false. And that's basically what if statements do for us. They allow us to execute or not execute blocks of code based on conditions. And all that really matters is that this expression here evaluates to true or false. So we could have something like a function call here. And if this function returns true, we're going to have this block of code execute. Otherwise, it's not going to execute. There's all kinds of relational operators and things we could use as well to help us construct conditions. So we could have here if price is less than or equal to 90 we're going to say that it's a good deal. So here we'll have price less than or equal to 90. And we'll put another statement here. We'll have C out and we'll say good deal followed by an inline. So this condition here is going to be true if the price is less than or equal to 90. The price is equal to 90. So this condition here will be true. And we will get both of these statements executing if we compile and run the program. So we can see price is less than or equal to 90 and we get good deal. We can also have what's called an else case. And the else case is a block of statements that will execute if this condition is not true. So we'll have here else and we'll have a block here and we'll output not a good deal followed by an end line. So if the price is let's say 150, now, if we save, compile, and run the program, we're going to get not a good deal followed by if statement done. So what's going on here is this condition is checked. 150 is not less than or equal to 90. So instead, we get this block of code executing. So the else case allows us to execute code when the condition is false. Now we can also have else if cases like this. Here we could have else if the price is greater than or equal to 200. We're going to say if the price is that high, it's a very bad price. We'll output very bad price because it's too expensive, followed by an inline. So the way this code will execute is that first, this condition will be checked. If the condition evaluates to true, this block of code will execute, and then execution will jump down here. If this condition is false, then this condition will be evaluated. 
If it's true, this block of code will execute, and then execution will continue down here. But if this condition evaluates the false, then this else block of code is going to execute. We can test this out. So let's set a price of 210. We can save, compile, and run the program, and now we'll get very bad price followed by if statement done. So again, what's happening here is that the price of 210 was not less than or equal to 90. So instead of this block executing, this condition is now going to be checked. The price is greater than or equal to 200. So this block of code will execute, and then execution will continue down here. And we can call this whole thing an if, else if, else control structure. Now, if our block of code for any one of these cases here is only a single statement, we don't actually need the open and close brackets here. So we could just have this. And we could change the price to let's say 120. So that way this else case will run. And if we save, compile and run the program, it's going to work the same. We'll get not a good deal followed by if statement done. Now we could also put this statement on the same line as the else keyword, and this will also work. So we can save, compile and run this. And now we'll get not a good deal followed by if statement done. So it works the same way. We could also have additional else if cases. So for example, I could have another else if case here. It's very important to keep in mind the order in which the conditions are going to be evaluated in order to ensure that we implement algorithms correctly. So for example, let's say that we want to output amazing deal if the price is less than or equal to 50. So here I'll have price less than or equal to 50. So if the price is this low, we're going to output amazing deal followed by an end line. Now, if I set the price to let's say 40, I might expect this here to run because the price is less than or equal to 50. So we should output amazing deal. But if we try it instead, we're going to get good deal followed by if statement done. So what's going on here is this condition is first evaluated and the price is less than or equal to 90. So instead of this case executing, this block is going to execute and then execution is going to continue down here. So it's important to keep in mind the order in which conditions are evaluated when using if statements in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.